If you're new to the channel, one of the themes of my videos is showing you that a lot of success you see on social media is a facade. The wealth, the cars, the mansions, and the high income claims sound great in marketing a brand, but many times when you do a little digging, the success isn't quite as grandiose as it seems. A few weeks ago, there was a big event called Social Gloves where popular creators on TikTok would box against popular creators on YouTube. Some of the biggest names on each platform were chosen to participate. There was a lot of hype surrounding the event as the fighters were promoting the event to their millions of followers on social media for a couple of months. Given the millions of people who follow these influencers, the promoters of the event thought this could be one of the biggest events of the year. Hold your laughter, please. TikTok star Bryce Hall claims he'll get $5 million plus pay-per-view share for celebrity boxing fight. So I'm getting 4% of pay-per-view sales, then $5 million as soon as I step in the ring, and then a $1 million knockout bonus, Hall told No Jumpers TikTok channel. With the Paul brothers generating millions of pay-per-view buys and even more millions of social media interactions surrounding their highly publicized boxing events, the promoters of Social Gloves figured this would be an easy payday. They were charging $50 for pay-per-view and held the event at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. Memes aside, and I know most of you probably don't care, but I thought it was a really cool idea. Social media influencers are the new entertainers for the next generation, and seeing them all fight in a boxing ring makes for great entertainment, even if they aren't professional boxers. Imagine if there was a boxing match for fake gurus to see who was the best fake guru. See, now we're getting somewhere. The event happens. A lot of people claim it was a success. Bryce Hall gets beaten badly and everyone got paid, right? Isn't that why you participate? Well, maybe not everyone got paid. This is, I'm seeing this everywhere since the fights. And I saw Gruen also, one of the announcers was like, I didn't get paid. And Gruen, I think was like, I told you so. But and, that's and the, the problem is though, he's right. Did you see what he was tweeting like three months ago about the fight? He was like, no one's going to get paid. This doesn't sound good. From what I've seen, the event sounded like a success. There were a good amount of people in attendance. And of course, there were a lot of pay-per-view buys, right? Given that everyone in this match is a large influencer. But did the fighters not get paid? Nope. Nobody got paid. Fighters didn't get paid. Artists didn't get paid. None, none, no one got paid, I'm pretty sure. So Br Bryce Hall didn't get any money? Uh, not, not... From what I know, and I haven't got to actually talk to Bryce, I guess, yet, but since after the fight has happened, all the reports have said that no one's gotten paid. Bryce Hall, the TikTok dancer, got worked in the ring, took a public beating to his brand, and didn't get paid. Possibly the biggest L of 2021 so far. Even worse is that he expected to make $5 million plus a percentage of pay-per-view buys. It's going to take a lot of dancing on camera to make up for the $5 million difference. No They've gotten their signing bonuses, which was like probably 100k, 50k, depending on the fighter. None of the other money's come through. Are they telling them when they will get paid, or are they just leading them on? They must be saying they're getting paid because this would be I a huge story. I am 95 percent sure that they filed for bankruptcy. Um, like two days ago or something like that. Now we have a more interesting story. There's nothing more American than promoting paying your labor force a nice sum of money, taking the profits, and then filing for bankruptcy after not paying your labor force because the business was losing a lot of money. Three big names that performed at the event were DJ Khaled, Migos, and Lil Baby. If you had COVID and lost your taste, in good music, then I'm sure you enjoyed their performances. I have a hard time believing the artists didn't get paid. If there's one thing I know about the music industry, it's that the people running the show and controlling the artist's career don't play with money. They for sure got their money up front knowing what could and likely would happen. When the label received a phone call from Austin, you know the executives were definitely asking for money up front for their biggest artist to perform at a boxing match between TikTok and YouTube influencers. They've been in the business for a long time and have seen every way for an artist to not get Get paid they don't take those risks if they hadn't paid all the fighters would be like going bananas right now they but must be thinking they're still getting paid they have to think they're still getting paid i heard i heard there was there was suing involved already within a week of the event being done lawsuits are already entering the picture this story gets pretty wild and i believe it's about to get worse for all parties involved you'll probably start connecting the dots in just a minute here's where the story really starts to take a turn austin mcbroom was the fighter in the main event boxing against bryce hall Bryce Hall claimed that he was going to make $5 million and a percentage of pay-per-view. Austin agreed with that number and said he'd be making the same. Social Gloves was putting on the event and all of the fighters were getting paid their fair share given their popularity and demand for the fight. The fight happens, the fighters don't get paid. Who's behind all of this? Who actually ran the event? Here's the trademark registration for Social Gloves. The owner is listed as Ace Hat Collection. That sounds eerily similar to the Ace Family, Austin's YouTube channel name. Here is Ace Hat Collection, Inks, Filing, and look who the director 
director is. It's Austin McBroom. Whoever the original internet detective was deserves credit for finding this scoop because it makes you wonder about the entire event. Given that this was newsworthy when it came out, I think it's fair to assume that no one knew Austin was at least part owner of the event. He's the biggest payout earner and owns the event. Sounds like a conflict of interest to me, and the fact that it wasn't disclosed means there may be more to the story. With a lot of attention being sent Austin's way, all of a sudden some other interesting stories begin getting reported. I wasn't familiar with the Ace family before the Social Gloves event, but apparently they are really popular. Nearly 20 million subscribers on YouTube, over 1 billion channel views, and millions of followers on Instagram and Snapchat. Austin McBroom launches How I Became a Millionaire program for $50 a month, but some think it's just another scam. Uh-oh, this is right up my alley. Even better if he promised to teach people some hidden secrets that they don't want you to know about. In this program, I'll be teaching four courses. The first course is how to grow your social media platforms. Let me just... I mean... The second course is how to make money from social media. But that's... The third course is how to start a business. And you could... And the last course is how to grow your business. Okay, yes, technically, you could just Google all of that. A YouTube entertainer who uses his baby kids to generate views is going to teach you how to become a millionaire on social media and how to start a business. Sign me up. This venture didn't last long, thankfully. There are enough faint gurus in the entrepreneur niche on YouTube. The last thing we need is for YouTubers in the exploiting my children for profit niche to start teaching you how to be become a millionaire. The program was announced on Instagram with the official HIBAM account already standing at 23.5k followers. In a video posted to the account, McBroom can be seen standing outside his mansion in front of various sports cars, which he says he achieved through the power of social media. If you ever wondered why people begin selling courses on how you can become a millionaire, this is proof. The program was $50 per month and probably had at least 2,000 people sign up, maybe 5,000 at least. That's a solid $250,000 per month business with no advertising costs. This scheme didn't last long, which is why he's probably struggling to pay his mortgage. Wait, what? Twitter user Def Noodles uncovered that the McBrooms were possibly facing eviction on their home. Using my favorite real estate software Batch Leads, I was able to find the mortgage information for the property. You can see that a notice of default was sent to the Ace Hat Collection, who is the owner of their property. Link in the description for any real estate investor watching this that wants to check out the Batch products on a 7-day free trial. Within Batch Leads, I can also see that they took out a commercial loan for $8.85 million and a second loan for $1 million. They combined two houses on one lot into a super house, so I'm assuming the second loan was part of that renovation process, but that's a lot of debt against the house that might not be worth what they owe. This estimate on Zillow for the house ranges from $7.5 million to $10.5 million. They're pretty leveraged on a unique house and a price point in the market that is very hard to sell. This isn't promising for someone using this house to teach us how to become millionaires. This house appeared to be listed for sale on July 10th, which is interesting timing. They also barely have enough equity to sell the house. It generally costs around 8% to sell a house, which is all the equity they have based on mortgages and a desired sales price of $10 million. Austin posted this on IG after the reports of notice of default became public. Stop blue hatting on me and my family's name. Ain't nobody getting evicted, nobody moving. Stop believing everything you see the haters say on the internet. If we were moving, we definitely would of informed the world and made a whole YouTube video about it, not a half YouTube video about it. The notice of default is real and their equity is really tight on an exclusive house at a price point that generally stays on the market for a long time, so he better hope he has enough cash flow to pay his mortgage. Why does this matter? Because we have someone possibly in financial trouble that owes all of these fighters millions of dollars. Ace family reportedly being sued for 65K as more lawsuit details leak online. This article was written on July 7th, just a few days before they listed their home for sale. Now, further details have leaked alleging that the Ace family is being sued for $65,000 by their former landlord due to breaking their contract early and failing to pay rent. The property allegedly cost the couple $7,000 in rent per month. That's not all, documents also show that the YouTube duo had purportedly refused to pay Subify, a social media platform aggregator, an amount of $120,455. Just because someone is getting sued doesn't mean they're guilty or a horrible person, but these two look like lawsuits that have merit. You don't sue someone for $120,455 if you don't know that's the actual amount, and I really hope they didn't stiff their landlord for $65,000 while parading around social media like multi-millionaires. Apparently, there's also a lawsuit from Ahern Rentals filed in April 2020 for unpaid construction fees, I'm assuming dealing with their mega mansion project. Call out Ace Family and Austin McBroom, called out by owner of car rental company in Miami who alleges that Austin allegedly failed to pay her $7,500 for the rental of two exotic cars for five days. 
Austin and Catherine McBroom are allegedly being sued for $30 million. Here's the lawsuit showing Catherine, the wife, being sued for $30 million in punitive damages. I haven't looked into each individual lawsuit, but this is concerning. This couple is facing many lawsuits, with most of them sounding valid, and they don't seem to have the funds to pay the fighters. And then this stage press conference happened yesterday. But let me go ahead and explain a little bit, because obviously, for the, past, for the past couple of weeks, I've been used as a punching bag. I've been having to bite my tongue for several reasons. One reason is I didn't want to be sued. This is always a cheap fallback line to use when you're guilty. The law protects you when you speak the truth. He's clearly not new to lawsuits, so not sure why he's afraid of getting sued now. But now that the lawsuit is filed against LiveX Live, Social Gloves is suing LiveX Live uh, for several reasons. This is where the story started to take another turn. Now Austin is placing the blame on LiveX Live. I hadn't heard of them until this interview. LiveX Live was the company that hosted the live stream for the event, and I'm assuming had some ownership of production of the entire event. More on them in just a second. So the two rumors are Social Gloves is bankrupt, which is cap, it's false, it's not true. Everyone that was at the event knows that there was probably like 20,000 people there just at the gate alone. We probably made three or four million dollars. This sounds great when listening to Austin speak, but there's been no mention of the expenses. Sure, making $3 million at the gate is cool, but this event probably cost at least $10 million to put on. At least $10 million. And the gate is one of the biggest revenue streams. So just Damn. that, we're not even talking about pay-per-view numbers. We're not talking Damn. about we're not talking about brand deals. We're just talking about at the event. So Social Gloves is not bankrupt at all. His facial expressions remind me of a door-to-door -door salesman trying his hardest to sell a product that has an average rating of 2.4 on Google reviews. The reported pay-per-view numbers circulating on the internet right now are around 130,000 buys. At $50 per buy, that's $6.5 million of revenue generated. Probably still not enough to cover break-even costs before even paying the fighters. Yeah, okay. okay. The second thing is saying that fighters did not get paid. Yes, fighters have not got paid yet, including myself, but that is because LiveX Live. This is where I started to wonder if Austin is actually not completely guilty of not paying the fighters. Social Gloves partnered with LiveX Live, who live streamed it and collected everybody's money. I can believe this. This is where the story starts to take another turn. It's possible that the company responsible for the funds is holding them and not paying the fighters. You'll see in a minute why this LiveX Live company may be the most shady actor in this entire event. Right? So the reason why the fighters haven't got paid yet is because LiveX Live has been holding on to all the funds. They have not paid Social Gloves one penny. And that's why Social Gloves is suing LiveX Live. Now that he's suing another company, maybe that proves he's not 100% guilty. This other company allegedly has the money, sue them, recoup the money, then the fighters get paid, right? Well, not so fast. Check out what I found about this LiveX Live company. This article explains that LiveX Live is getting sued by another company that is owed $650,000. This article was written before the Social Gloves event. XACT says that six-figure sum covers unpaid legal bills for services provided to LiveX Live to defend against one of the six lawsuits the company is currently facing. A Missouri data discovery firm hired to help LiveX Live prepare its defense against a $26 million lawsuit is asking a California judge to seize more than six $650,000 in unpaid legal fees from chief executive Robert Ellen's streaming app company. I'm not a member of Billboard, so unable to read the entire article, but the general theme is a company that allegedly committed fraud against a former friend and colleague, a misevaluation of the company to close a deal, unpaid licensing fees, and many other lawsuits ongoing. I think this story is about to get even more interesting because all of the public scrutiny seems to be towards Austin McBroom, and now he's saying, it's not my fault, it's a shady company over here holding all of the funds. Meanwhile, the shady company in question is facing $26 million lawsuits and spending hundreds of thousands just on legal fees to defend itself. Let's put on the conspiracy hat for a second. This is all just for fun. What if this LiveX Live company is using the funds earned from Social Glove to pay for their previous lawsuits? Do you see where I'm going with this? They owe money over here, they earn money over here. They use this money to pay off that money. What generally comes next? How long do you think it'll take for the fighters to get paid? Hear from me, straight from me. The fighters will be paid before the next event. The Social Gloves 2 is coming very soon. This is where I started to wonder if something super shady is going on. The fighters will get paid before Social Gloves number 2. You earn more money to pay off your debts from the previous fight. I'm not saying this is what's happening, but this has all of the red flags of a Ponzi scheme, doesn't it? With none of us being involved, we all don't know what happened, who holds the money, and who's guilty in this entire fiasco. But with Austin putting on the event, I have to put some of the onus on him for not doing his due diligence with this live X Live company. If they really are guilty, I don't see the fighters getting 
paid at all. What's unfortunate about the legal system is this LiveX Live company could still have the funds, burn all of it on other lawsuits, and if they lose or have to pony up the funds, they just declare bankruptcy and walk away. Fighters don't get paid. NBA star James Harden was named as an investor in the Battle of the Platforms YouTubers vs. TikTokers event in June, a boxing showdown that lost a reported $10 million. At least a couple of these fighters suffered a loss via knockout, which means they can easily claim potential health damages in a lawsuit. I strongly believe that the fighters of this event will never get paid, because based on everything I've shown in this video, I believe the event didn't generate nearly as much money as they initially thought, and the person holding the money is probably in crazy debt paying legal fees. Based on the alleged behavior of Austin and Catherine McBroom, I would not trust them to act in the best interests of the fighters. The lawsuits really don't look good for them, and knowing the legal system, the Live X Live company is probably going to file bankruptcy before any money is going to Austin and the Social Gloves fighters. What was a cool idea looks like it's going to be one of the biggest scams of the year on social media. This won't be over anytime soon. If you're into this kind of social media drama, I think you're going to have a Netflix series amount of drama in the next couple of months, and then you can buy tickets to Social Gloves number two so that every Social Gloves number one fighter can get paid. Thanks for watching.